Hello friends, how's everyone doing this evening? It's Pastor Sean here with the 5 Minute Challenge for today. And today I'd like for us to turn to the book of 1 Timothy in chapter 2. We're going to take a quick look at the first six verses as I encourage along the lines of what I titled Pray and Proclaim. Pray and Proclaim. I'm going to read this from the Amplified. We're going to do this quick study here from the Amplified uh, classic version of the Bible. From verse 1. It says, first of all, then I admonish and urge that petitions, that is specific requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be offered on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in positions of authority or high responsibility. Paul here is encouraging believers to pray for kings and all those in positions of authority, leadership, um, over them, regardless of whether they were believers or not, that is, whether the leaders were saved or unsaved, in the scheme of things. And the five-minute challenge today is for you to pray as a believer and to remain praying. Pray and keep praying, praying for leadership, praying for those in authority. And so, for example, as concerns the United States, you'd be praying for the President of the United States and everyone else, you know, down the pecking order in that regard as it concerns authority and leadership, uh, which will also scale down to the governors across the states and the state of Michigan. That will also include the governor of Michigan uh, and of Ohio or wherever you find yourself or you're listening um, this evening. And so such prayers, friends, go beyond the bounds or limitations of political affiliations or partisan leanings. And so the injunction from Scripture is to pray for leaders and to pray for those in authority. And so let's continue verse 2, that outwardly we may pass a quiet and undisturbed life and inwardly a peaceable one in all godliness and reverence and seriousness in every way. Quiet there from the original means the absence of external disturbances. And so we'll find that in the time that we find ourselves, there's been certain disturbances. I believe you can agree with me. For example, as it concerns the body of Christ, as it concerns House on the Rock Church, particularly, you know, the inability to be able to meet these past few weeks have been, you know, quite challenging, so to say the least. But this is kind of reason why, reasons why we're praying, okay? So that for the absence of external disturbances uh, haven't been disrupted. And peaceable refers to the absence of internal ones. That is, as we continue maintaining conduct that accords with godliness, with reverence for the Lord, and a strong uncompromising um, commitment to the truth of God's word as it concerns the gospel of Jesus. And so, friends, verse 3 says, For such praying is good, and right, and it is pleasing and acceptable to God our Savior, who wishes all men to be saved, increasingly to perceive and recognize and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. Here's the key thrust of the prayers, friends, as we have those in authority in prayer. That is the salvation, particularly the salvation of their souls. You know, friends, it's possible... Most of these leaders are possibly hostile to God or hostile to the things of God. And as a believer, it's not, it's not important. It's not, it's not beneficial. It's not fruitful to be agitated in yourself or to respond in the self-same manner to that. You can pray. You can pray, one, and then also you can proclaim the gospel in this wise. You can declare things as it concerns leadership so that they come to a knowledge of the truth. So, for example, you know, in your prayers, you can pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ Jesus should shine upon them. You can pray that laborers with the commitment to the truth of God will, in their circles, will come their way and then share the gospel, share the truth. You can pray that these leaders will come to the knowledge of Christ in surrendering to his lordship and to his leadership, to his lordship over their lives, that their hearts get transformed and that they lead with wisdom. And so we can continue, I can continue to give examples of how you pray or how to pray in that regard for leadership. But here's a question that I want to pose this, this evening. Where are you in relation to some sort of authority or leadership over your life? Where are you in relation to that? It's good and it's great to pay, pray for, for example, the leaders of the church, the pastors and whatnot, but I'm talking secular now. Where are you in relation to leadership as it concerns, for example, someone in authority in your neighborhood, at your job, in your business, on your street, in your municipality, in the township, in your county, in the state? 
it behoves you to know that you also yourself are a laborer. So it's not just in your mind dumping and say, oh, that they get someone to preach to them, but where you are in your situation and circumstance in your location, you can also pray on the one hand and proclaim by way of lifestyle, conversation, conduct, with those in your sphere, in your immediate sphere, as far as contact is concerned. You can bring the gospel as well, bring the light of the gospel to bear in that situation. What is that message, verses 5 and 6, as I close out? Contextually, that there is one God, and there's one mediator between God and man, that is the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. You can run with this message, and you can proclaim truth in that regard. So the challenge, friends, Pray for those in authority and in leadership and in your sphere as well. Keep proclaiming the truth of God's word and hope to see you around soon.